if you can be grateful in circumstances that maybe aren't perfect, then then that's the true relationship that you have with God is when in the hard moments Amen. you still have the ability to praise him. Even Amen. if you ha- bear, if your voice is cracking and you're on your knees and you're breaking mm-hmm. to the point of breaking. Yeah. But you can still praise him. I think that's the most beautiful thing. Life can feel like a roller coaster, but in the beauty and the chaos, if you look for it, life is full of love, joy, and kindness. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. Season three is Stories and Songs with Katie Nicole. Come join us. Have you thought about going back to school, but ultimately decided you don't have time to do it? Well, I have some exciting news for you. Colorado Christian University offers undergraduate and graduate degree programs in a flexible online format that works with your schedule, making it possible to go back to school and still have time for life's adventures. Don't put it off any longer. Pursue your passion and earn a degree that could help take you places you never imagined. Visit ccu.edu slash Candice to learn more. Hey friends, this summer we're listening to songs with Katie Nicole from her new album, Jesus Changed My Life. Katie, you're telling us stories behind every song and even a few extras, a few extra songs. So I want to know, how did you first know that you had a singing voice? Mm. You know, I have loved singing my whole life. I have been singing, literally, I have a video on my phone and it's, I'll show you later, of me when I was <laughs> like three years old. Uh-huh. And I'm singing like a VBS Bible school yep. song. And it's kind of like, whoa, how did, like looking at where I am now, like how cool that is that I was singing yeah. like, Jesus songs at three. So um, that is is where it kind of began. But I think I got pretty serious about it when I was, um, I was a bit older. I think that mm. I, I realized maybe this is, this is something that I want to do. And I, I realized I had a voice though pretty early on because I was constantly singing. Like I kind of just never stopped singing. Did you sing in school? Mm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was in church choir, school choir. I was in voice lessons. I was in literally anything. Oh, you were? Okay. Well, like anything you could do to sing, I was was singing. And were you always the girl that was called upon by the teacher? Like when when they knew they needed a strong singer, like they're like, Katie can do it. I mean, yes, I guess. But also they were, they were like, you've done it too many times. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I, um, Sometimes that happens too. I cried at like five years old. They, we had this Christmas play at my church uh-huh. um, and there there was like song and like acting in it. And I wanted the lead at five. <laughs> and um, I didn't get it because I was too little. And so I just sobbed because I was too young to play this part. I was like, are you kidding me? I was good at it and you still won't give me the part. <laughs> But I was was you know, there redemption any other year? Did you get the lead part? I I definitely got some leads in the future. So I was there was redemption there, and I I you know obviously ended up here. So I think mm-hmm. there's definitely been a good amount of redemption in my story. <laughs> uh, yeah, there definitely has been. <laughs> um, I'm always curious because I'm someone <clears throat> who r- desperately wishes that God gave them a singing voice. I really wish I could sing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know my daughter sings. Yeah. And I know that she would just sing at home a lot. She did sing mm. at church and at school, but she just totally. kind of like found her voice mm. and started to to um, hone in on that yeah. herself. For sure. But how is that with you? I'm always curious as like a wannabe vocalist <laughs> because Goodness. I find it so hard. Like, how do you even find the the breath and how to breathe? Was that due to a lot of mm. teachers or was it something that kind of came a little more naturally to you? Um, I, so I, I guess maybe I have to relate this to something very specific. I've had vocal teachers in my, my life, but I taught myself. Mm. I would sit and I would mimic 
anyone and everyone that I loved who, you know, like all the music that I loved. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with just an interesting style of singing because I was singing so, literally everything. You could go from like country music, R&B to Christian music. I mean, Christian music is very broad, but you know, just every genre you could possibly think of. I did theater, I did all of these things. And yeah. so my voice throughout the years was definitely like shaped in different ways. And it's because I, I, I just did it all the time. And honestly, mm -hmm. Everyone can sing. I know you're gonna disagree with me because you've said you can't sing, but I don't I don't believe that. I believe everyone has a voice and that they can use it. And obviously we're supposed to shout, you know, a joy for to the Lord. Yes. So everyone can oh, sing. Oh, listen, I shout. I shout and I sing. It just isn't always pretty. <laughs> I mean, but it's something that is a learned skill. <laughs> right. So technically not everyone's going to be the best singer, right. but everyone can. I mean, unless you are completely tone deaf, that is a right. thing too. Then your chances of being on tune might right. be slim to none. Right. But at least but if you're you not tried, tone deaf, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. If you're not but tone if you deaf, have to, you can learn yes. to a degree, and you can you can train your ear. I think I think yeah. everyone can, and I I mean, for me, I think because I trained for so many years, it's just mm -hmm. why I think it comes more naturally to me now. Yeah. Like people are like, it seems effortless. Well, it is because I've been doing it for so long. Right. But there are still things you have to apply to keep healthy, you know. Yeah. You know, your voice needs to stay yeah. healthy and happy. Exactly. So. I get it. Well, let's talk about the song, Jesus Changed My Life. Yeah. I mean, that uh, is a pretty big statement. And I want to hear the story behind that. Yeah. The personal story yeah. for you. Um, I know a little bit about it, but why don't you share with our listeners. Yeah. You know, as we talk about redemption, I've seen a lot of God's redemption in my life. And the way that he can redeem a life is something I think is so incredibly beautiful. And I'm like, if it can happen for me, it can happen for you too. So I want to point out that this was the title track for the album. And the reason why is because I wanted for when people stumble upon this album to think, Jesus changed her life. Can he change mine? Like that was the question mm -hmm. I wanted people to ask themselves. And so, um, but I want to go back into my story a little bit and talk about some of the harder things that I've had to go through in life just because I, and I mean, all my songs really kind of encompass just different parts of the story, but I feel like this one truly is, I went through a really dark season of my life. Um, I had back surgery in 2015, um, for scoliosis. I have a uh, really bad congenital scoliosis, which is actually a very rare form of scoliosis. And it required a lot of um, like going in and having to manipulate my spine. Mm -hmm. So I come out of the surgery and I, I now have metal rods and screws in my spine. And immediately, I mean, it takes about a year to recover from the surgery, but it, uh, literally I was in so much pain, so much pain right away. Before or and or after the surgery. Literally, well, I mean, I was in less pain before the surgery, but my body was very naturally wow. shaped in that way. Mm -hmm. So it was just the natural like mechanics of my body was okay. that I had a really curved spine. Yeah. So like your straight spine, like you don't have pain from having a straight spine and I didn't have pain from having a curved spine, but there were mechanical things that were going on. Like it was putting pressure on my lungs and on my heart and all of this stuff. So that's where there was danger involved. So I was in less pain, but there, there was a lot of stuff that could have happened. So this surgery was a, an emergency, like it needed mm -hmm. to happen. It wasn't like right then and there, but it needed to happen as soon as possible. Right. So I get the surgery. And then on, when I'm on the other side of the surgery is when that excruciating pain begins, the physical pain that I started to deal with was crazy. Um, and after a year when I'm supposed to be better and I'm supposed to be like the other kids doing everything that I've, you know, wanted to do, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a cheerleader. And that was, that dream was crushed very quickly because my body just could not handle it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, after a year, I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. What's going on? And I, so I go to the doctor and I'm back with my, my surgeon and, and they're like, well, we did everything we could. And you're supposed to be better. So we don't know what to tell you. And so that led me into seeing so many doctors 
talking to, you know, physical therapists and, and literally anyone you could put on the team, there was on yeah, my medical team. Sure. And they, you know, eventually I had doctors that were telling me I was crazy and I needed to go see a therapist because I was just depressed. Well, I was depressed. I mm -hmm. was also incredibly depressed at the time because of the chronic pain I was right. dealing with right. and because of the amount of people in my life that were just being like, well, is it in your head or is it real? And I knew that it was real, but oh, I started so to question myself. Like I was like, of I course. don't know if I believe myself anymore, but I'm like, but I, I'm in, so I, I can't move. I'm in, I'm in fetal position many, many days of the week. And, you know, some days were better than others. And I'm a very stubborn, I will push through type of person. So in that season of my life, I think a lot of people didn't really see from the outside, except for, you know, the people closest to me, really what was going on. Cause I could put on this kind of like, I'm okay facade that wasn't mm -hmm. real. And, um, you know, and I think I, I tried to accept my situation, but I couldn't accept my situation. And I kept telling, you know, my doctors, I was just like, you have to do something. Yeah. You were fighting for yourself because you knew yeah. it wasn't right. And I had to, ad I had to advocate for myself. Yeah. And so eventually my surgeon was like, well, what we can do is we could go in and we could remove these, you know, rods that we've put into your back. And he was like, but the truth is, is that you could end up way worse. And mm -hmm. if anything, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you ended up way worse. And I was like, I don't care. I genuinely believe this is what has to happen. And I, I felt very connected and disconnected to God in that season because it was like, I, I knew that my God could do miracles, mm -hmm. something that was within me that wasn't even just an active thought in my brain. It was more of a, like internally, it was filling me that there was yeah. a, there was a piece that my God could do a miracle. But then at the same time, I was so frustrated and mad about my situation, angry at mm -hmm. God. I had a lot of bitterness and anger that was just fueled by the fact that I was like, why God, why would this happen to me? Do I deserve this? Like it, the amount of questions that we ask of ourselves course. in these storms that we go through in life. And so I'm, I reached this place where I'm just so angry. Well, after I had this doctor's appointment where I'm told, you know, this is your only option. We, that day we set up that surgery was going mm -hmm. to happen. I had an immediate peace, but I think the thing that really topped it off for me was, um, I was at dinner and I look out the window and I see not just one rainbow, but two rainbows. Mm. And these rainbows are just this immediate like rush of God's about to do something. Yeah. God's about to do something. And I'm reminded of God's promise. And anytime I see a rainbow, I'm like, God is showing up right yep. now. He's here and I see him. Yep. And I don't need to see him or feel him because I know him. But in that moment, I did need that. Yeah. And seeing that was like, okay, something's on the other side. Something is on the other side of this. I know that there is a light. And, and that was something that I actually had to keep reminding me my, myself, like from surgery one to surgery two, I had to be like, there's a light. Mm -hmm. While while it feels dark, there's still just, a, even if it's a sparkle, yep. the smallest little sparkle, there's still a light. And so I was very hopeful in that moment. Okay, I am excited to tell you about a great opportunity to pursue your passion and find your calling with a degree from Colorado Christian University. CCU offers Christ-centered higher education that transforms students to impact the world with grace and truth. This means you can earn your undergraduate or graduate degree from a university that not only shares your faith and values, but integrates them in every course. Plus, most degree programs are 100% online and designed specifically for busy adults. School should work around your schedule, not the other way around. That's why they have five-week classes that allow you to take one class at a time and work on your studies when it's convenient for you. Check them out using my unique link at ccu.edu slash Candice to learn more. I then have this second surgery. And after the surgery, I can't even describe the amount of comfort I felt that I was going to be okay. Well, I mean, when you come out of back you, surgery, you that's a, not easy. But <laughs> Right, of course. But you no. had a piece that 
really, truly surpassed all understanding. Oh, beyond what I, I've ever— A piece ever, that you'd never felt before. It was an encounter with the Lord that I've never had since and I never had before. So it is something that I will never forget in my entire life. It was just an in, incredible moment with the Lord. It was just like, and granted, you know, the first surgery I had, I didn't remember my two weeks of recover, mm -hmm. recovery after the surgery because that is, I mean, there was a lot of medicine in me. Like I was just very yeah. medicated. This second surgery, this is really cool. And this is props to the doctors in this, but th it was opioid free. It was a completely, there was no morphine involved. Wow. Like you think about back surgery, that's a pretty intense oh, yeah. surgery to have. You have to relearn yeah. how to walk. So, yeah. and every time you do it, like you have to relearn how to walk and it's like your body feels heavier yeah. than it's ever been. And when I come out of this surgery, they give me the lowest dose of something called ketamine, which is, mm -hmm. it's, it's not an opioid and it is non-addictive and things like that. And so like, and for kids, they, that was why they were doing this research. I yeah. was their, like their first trial patient. So I had, there was a lot of risks involved with this surgery. Yeah. I was out of the hospital in five days and on Tylenol in five days. Wow. I was playing. Were you able to walk? I, yeah, I was on stage a month, about a month later. It was, it, honestly, it was probably so, less than a month. <laughs> so when you talk about Jesus changed my life, I mean, do you talk oh, about gosh. it from the physical sense or from the spiritual sense? Because you had yeah. both of those moments. I, I did have both of those moments. And that's the thing. I, I would say that I have had both so I can speak from both and I can testify mm -hmm. of both. But I would say that the heart change that I had after the surgery was just in insane because I was so angry at the world. Mm -hmm. I was so mad at my life and the situation I was in. But not only that, but and this is this is honestly a really hard part of my story, but I just didn't care if I made it to the next day. Mm. And so when you don't care about anything or anyone, you start to treat people with not not much kindness. Yeah. And I became a person that I I never want to be again, ever. I I was such a like I just don't care about anything and I don't I don't need to. But I can't even imagine you like that, Katie. Just having <laughs> like gotten to know you over this amount of time, yeah. uh, and and hearing, knowing the depth of all of your lyrics, yeah. I can't even imagine that you would be that person. I was very and yet Jesus changed <laughs> your life. Jesus changed my life. So I could say that he changed my heart, my character, he changed my mind about who he is, mm. and. Physically, I did come out of the surgery with a straighter spine than when I had the rods in. Now, unfortunately, I cannot say the same today, but it's been many years now. It's been almost five years. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing okay. I, I, I feel like- I think that's really important for everyone to hear because yeah. you, you came out stronger on that second surgery, but it's not the same today. No. And that doesn't equal failure. That doesn't no. equal God's not with me anymore. God, yeah. forgot, God forgot about me. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean any of those things. Yeah, God absolutely. was with you in that moment and he's still with you in this moment. And whatever mm. trials lie ahead, he's going to be with you yeah. in every future moment. Absolutely. Well, and I, I also think it doesn't take away from the miracle. No, not at all. It's not taking away from what happened because the miracle, and I think truly, if you can be grateful in circumstances that maybe aren't perfect, then then that's the true relationship that you have with God is when in the hard moments, Amen. you still have the ability to praise Him. Even if, you bear, if your voice is cracking and you're on your knees and you're breaking mm -hmm. to the point of breaking, yeah, but you can still praise Him. I think that's the most beautiful thing that, and I think that's where I'm like, Jesus changed my life because I can praise him in the storm, but I can praise him in the triumph as well. So I, I don't care where I am. I always give a shout of praise to the Lord. Like that that's is a just, good word, <laughs> Katie know, Nicole. Like, <laughs> it's a good, good word. I'm so glad that you gave it to us. Yeah. And um, that was, uh, we all need to hear that and be reminded of it. And totally. your story is powerful. Totally. Yeah. Um, hey, we're we're gonna actually take some listener questions yeah. in our episode. So yeah. I would love if we could answer these together. Mm, absolutely. Uh, anyone can write, it, go to my website, candace.com, and you can write mm. in listener questions that we can then answer on future episodes. But today's question is from Christy. And Christy says, what does it physically look like to take refuge in or protection 
in God. Mm. When I'm struggling, do I just read the Bible? When I try to do this, I don't know what to read, and I just end up being more frustrated. Help. Mm. Mm. So, <laughs> well, I uh, I have an answer to that. I don't yeah. know if you have an answer that you'd like to to share. I mean, what what help helps you, Katie, when you're struggling to know that um, you feel protected or can take refuge in God? Well, I feel like you know, reading the Word of God is incredibly important, and I feel like that is an amazing place to start. But I find myself praying and fasting when mm. I feel like there's no, like I can't see something, I can't feel something. And I'm like, I don't know where the presence of God is right now because the presence of God always feels like protection to me. Mm. And when I, when I know that the presence of God is in the room, I know that no darkness can stand against this light that God has provided in the room. And so I have to go and I have to remind myself of truth in those moments. Yeah. If I'm reminding myself of truth, then I, well, then the lies, ha like, they can't stand a chance against the truth. Anyways, right. you know, the, the truth is always going to just smash, just yep. gone. Those yep. lies are off the table. But, um, but I definitely, I find myself just praying and worshiping and fasting because I know that I can't hear the presence of the Lord if I'm distracted. Yeah. I, if I'm if I'm looking around myself and all I see is is just the distractions of the world, how could I ever focus on God? Yeah, you know, and, yep. and there's a lot of like selfishness that comes in to that as well. Just when you're you know distracted by so many things and you're like, this is an important thing. Well, no, because the priority should always be God. And mm -hmm. if the priority is always God, then you could move anything aside. There's not yeah. a, a moment in your day that you couldn't give to the Lord, no matter where you yep. are and no matter yep. when it is. It's so true. And I, I do encourage everyone. I mean, for me, it does, it starts at reading the Bible because when you mm. talk about God's truth and that truth will always crush lies and yeah. fear and all of those things. Well, we only know that by reading the word of God. Absolutely. We know God's characteristics by uh, reading the Bible. So my, yeah. my pro tip, I guess, would be that um, in my very first season of the podcast, mm -hmm. Tara Lee Cobble was on mm -hmm. and she had has a podcast where you can read through the Bible in a year. Yeah. And she's amazing at that commentary mm. to help you understand the Bible. Mm. Um, another real helpful tool for me is visualization. Mm. I think because I am a very visual person. And so when I know God's word and I, I read about his attributes and his characteristics, both, um, you know, uh, Physically, I like to visualize the physical. So mm -hmm. I like to visualize God putting me under his wing, mm -hmm. like, you know, a mama, a mama hen to her little baby chicks. I like mm -hmm. um, to visualize that. I like to visualize the protection of the Holy Spirit and angels covering mm -hmm. me, like, like walking and standing behind me, especially when I'm fearful. And I walk into a room and I'm like, oh, I, I got some people over my shoulders. No one else can see them, but I see them. <laughs> and I visualize it. And I know that God's presence is with me. That yeah. also helps me a lot. And, um, you know, I think in a very physical sense, okay, I'm going to wrap this question up, but in a very physical sense, I think it's also um, healthy to be reminded that our bodies themselves need to be taken care of. Mm. And sometimes when our bodies aren't um, being fed properly or getting enough rest mm -hmm. or getting some movement throughout the day, that that mm. can also affect how we're feeling, which can then translate into emotions that may, mm. may help make us feel like God isn't with us anymore. Totally. So sometimes the, the way to physically uh, connect to those things is like, make sure you're taking care of your body too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's all, well, all very important. <laughs> yeah. Well, those, those, uh, thank you for answering that. That was, that was awesome. And we hope that helped Christy. We have some special things for you this season. Katie and I made a playlist for you. So just go to Candice.com. We've got a link to all the music from these episodes, plus some extra songs Katie and I picked out that we hope that you'll love. Go to Candice.com, find the link, and it's also in our show notes. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you're a fan of Katie's music, and let me know if there's someone else you'd like me to interview. 
This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved. <laughs>